The Franklin District is home to some of the most productive and durable soils for vegetable growing, but it's prone to erosion and subsequent soil and nutrient losses. In the late 1990s, local growers set up guidelines for erosion control as part of the Franklin Sustainability Project. In 2014, AgriLink New Zealand, alongside growers and erosion specialists, produced the Erosion and Sediment Control Guidelines for Vegetable Production. We have a project called Don't Muddy the Waters, and that project is all about quantifying how much erosion is happening on properties, and then how much can you capture in sediment control devices. Our focus in this project is looking at the vegetable industry. Cultivated land obviously has erosion issues, and so then how do you minimise erosion on a cultivated vegetable property? What's nice about this project is it builds on a massive amount of work that's been done previously. So back in the early 90s, there was a really large storm event that occurred in Pukekohe. And that really galvanised everybody to get involved in a project that looked at a whole range of sustainability issues. One of those key issues was erosion and sediment control. Amongst irrigation management, plant health, but erosion was what that project lived and died on. That project was the Franklin Sustainability Project. And it was a fantastic example of getting a whole group of growers together, the council, and coming up with a whole range of sustainability measures. The nice thing about that was you have everybody coming together, rather than splitting off and doing whatever they thought was the best solution. People need to have the numbers and the details, and that's what this most recent project is all about. How do you quantify what's happening in the measures that the growers have put up? Ultimately, you need to have sediment control. Our issue with sediment control is there's two key elements. First of all, there's bed load, which is the really heavy stuff that drops out quite quickly. The second element is suspended sediment, and it's the suspended sediment that gets into the waterways that causes a whole lot of issues downstream. This project has had a number of trials that have run. One of them was in Levin, where we looked at the size of the riparian strip. And in Pukekohe, our focus has been on sediment control. So what is the effectiveness of a silt trap? And how big a silt trap do you need to be effective? We have a four-step process when you look at a paddock. So the first step is, what is my paddock? How large is the paddock? What's the slope? That's my paddock assessment. Step two is, how do I minimise the water that enters that paddock? So that way you only deal with the water that directly falls on the paddock. Step three, how do I deal with the water that does fall on the paddock? So that's erosion control. What do I do in the paddock? Do I have cover crops? Do I do wheel track ripping? What am I doing in the paddock to stop that soil from moving? And the fourth step is sediment control. So what do I need to do to stop the water that leaves the paddock having lots of sediment in it? I.e., do I need a silt trap? Do I need an earth bun? That's my final step. This is the stuff that you want to look at here. The whole paddock assessment. What we've done over the years now is uh, bunding on the headlines, silt traps and wheel track ripping. And uh, that minimises, not totally eliminates it, but soil erosion. In the winter time we put cover crops in um, and that holds the soil in place at times. The tracks are panned over the summertime or, or when you work the ground and the water can't drain freely. So with a wheel track rippy, it opens up a little V, lets the water drain in and soaks away in theory. It's working on slopes up to 15 degrees. On heavy downpour, you can actually encourage that soil movement, so you've got to pick and choose which paddocks you do it. Uh, by loosening up the soil on a, on a two to three inch rain, downpours, it will move. So it has its advantages and has its disadvantages also. What we have here is a forebay, and the forebay is before it goes into the main silt trap. The idea of a forebay is it's much, much easier to clean out. You can get into a forebay much easier than you can get into a silt trap. What happens in the forebay is the bed load drops out super fast. So as soon as you slow that water down in the forebay, the bed load drops out and you can see here the build-up that's just occurred in the last month. Water then flows into the main silt trap 
and that's where we deal with the suspended sediment. So in our trial, we are monitoring how much water is flowing into the silt trap, and we're also monitoring how much is flowing out. We have, as part of this project, a Niwa sampler, and the Niwa sampler grabs water every 6,000 litres. Takes that sample, we aggregate that sample up, and later on in the lab we measure how much suspended sediment is in each of those samples. With a vegetable operation, obviously you want to try and minimise how much gets into your silk trap. So you want to keep as much soil as possible, of course, on your paddock. But at some time in the year, irrespective of your erosion control, you need to have sediment control. And this is all about sediment control. So this is all about minimising how much leaves your property and goes into the greater environment. The outcome is ultimately a whole lot of information that says this is how effective your measures are and that can then be delivered to councils and to NGOs that ask how effective they are. For the growers themselves, we have a app that shows how effective these different control measures are. And the nice thing with that app is they can dial up what their mitigation measure is, be that a silt trap, be that cover crops, and it shows how much uh, sediment uh, has been captured in those traps or how much the uh, other mitigation measure has affected them. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.